everyone. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to uh, set up checkpoints for our platform game. So I went ahead and set up some basic stuff uh, for this game so you don't have to do it. Uh, you already know how to do this from the previous tutorials. We have the platform movement object. We've got a player object here. Um, then I got these dudes called checkpoints. This is going to be our checkpoints. Whenever you cross these thresholds, it's going to save to a position and when you restart the frame, it's going to load that position instead of your initial position. Now these guys have two frames. Uh, one is the unchecked frame. That's the animation that plays whenever you haven't touched the checkpoint. And then this one here is the second one. This is after you've touched the checkpoint. So you want to make sure you have two frames for these guys set up as such. And uh, we're not looping. We have no speed because we want to manually change the animation frame. Also, we have two global values called save X and save Y. And this is going to be the values that we save our X and Y position into. And when we reload the frame, that is where we're going to place the player. So, um, I guess the first thing we want to do is, let's let you be able to restart. Now this would be, I mean, it depends on your game, but uh, you would probably want to do this when you die. So this would be restarting the frame. So we're going to say upon pressing a key, we're going to make it R for restart. Then we're going to restart the frame, which is under the frame object or storyboard control. Sorry. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where is it? Frame. Where's restart? The, here it is. Restart the current frame. Okay. Now we're going to need to initialize our global values to save X and save Y because it, this is just a good thing to do. Wherever you put this guy initially in the game, whenever you're designing it, we want that to be the initial position. Um, and we're going to need to do that because when the frame starts, that's when we're going to set the player to the position. So if uh, the saved position, so initially the save position is going to be zero, zero, and we don't want him to spawn at zero, zero. So we're going to make sure that doesn't happen. So we are going to initialize, I can't spell, initialize the start position. Position, position, it's embarrassing. All right, uh, start a frame. And we're gonna ask if the global value of save x equals zero, because if it equals zero, then it hasn't been filled yet, because we're never going to have a save position at the zero point. I mean, you might, I can't imagine why that, that's one pixel away from the edge. That would be a really weird place for a checkpoint. Uh, all right, so say if, it, if it's save x equals zero and start a frame, we are going to need to initialize these two values. So we are going to set the global value of save x to the current x position of our player. And we're going to do the same thing for uh, global position y. So save y oops, to uh, the y position of our player. Oh, I missed. need to delete that zero. That zero doesn't need to be there. Okay. Um, okay, so that'll work. Now we need to respawn the player. So what we're gonna do is add another comment. Respawn, or we'll say set position at respawn. Now this is the point at which we are going to change the X and Y position of our player because uh, the, the level is restarting. So start a frame, and we also wanna make sure that the value has been filled. So we'll check for a global value. If save x is different than zero, meaning that we have touched checkpoint, we have a value in here, uh, then we are going to set the position, the x position of our player to the global value, save x, and we're going to set the position, the y coordinate of our player to the global value, save y. Okay. Now we need to make it so that whenever we touch a uh, checkpoint, call this checkpoints, that we 
change the save X and save Y to be the, the X and Y coordinate of that checkpoint so that when we respawn, the player will respawn at the position of the last checkpoint he touched. So we will say, uh, if, you've, if you the player has collided with another object and that object is the checkpoint, then we are going to set the global value. We're gonna set save X to the checkpoints X and save Y to the checkpoints Y. Exchange change global value, set. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, remember our restart. So right now, if we restart, he should restart back on top over here because that was the initial position we saved at. That worked. Let's go and touch this checkpoint. Okay, that, that worked. Now we need to set up the animations for whenever we have this. So <clears throat> now there's something extra we're gonna have to do here, so I'm gonna explain it real quick. See, now if you just had our character walking around and touching checkpoints, these checkpoints would stay activated. You'd have a check here, and a check here, and a check here, and you wouldn't know which checkpoint was activated when you were walking by them, because they'd all have check, check marks. So we gotta turn them, whenever the player touches a new checkpoint or a checkpoint, we need to turn them all off first. So what we're going to do is whenever there's a collision between the player and the checkpoint, we're going to start a loop. So a bit of fast loops, start a loop, we're going to call this checkpoints off, and we're going to run this loop the number of checkpoint objects times. So number of objects under checkpoints. Okay, we need to insert a new event. And we are going to say on loop, and the name of our loop was checkpoints off. Pretty sure. Let's make sure that's right. Uh, start loop checkpoints off. All right. So on checkpoints off, we want to force the frame. This is going to run. This is going to loop one time for every single uh, checkpoint object, and it's going to turn them off. So we're going to go to animation. There it is. We're going to change the animation sequence. No, animation frame to zero, which is the first frame. Um, now, because we're running a loop on all these, it's going to turn even the one that we touched off, so we're gonna have to turn it back on. So we're gonna say have another event under collisions, except this is gonna be overlapping another object. So as long as our player is continually overlapping our checkpoint, it'll just keep turning it on. That way, nothing, nothing goofy will happen. We'll make sure that there's absolutely going to be a checkpoint value or a checkpoint animation for the proper checkpoint. So we're gonna change the animation. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Uh, change animation frame to one, which is our checkpoint. And that should be good. Let's see if it works. Okay, we got a checkpoint there. Does he respawn there? He does respawn there. Let's go see if the other checkpoints are off. Let's see if we can toggle them back and forth. That checkpoint is off. Let's hit it on. Bam. Let's respawn. We can respawn there. And the other checkpoint is off. So it looks like it worked. Um, let me think if there's anything else I need to add to this. Let's just keep touring all these checkpoints and testing them. I'm pretty sure this is everything we need for our checkpoint, a simple checkpoint system. Um, now, obviously, you're probably going to want to eventually add saving, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that a little bit later in another tutorial. We're probably going to save to an INI at first. Um, an INI is really good, but it has some downsides. We'll talk about that whenever that, that uh, video, when it's time to make that video. So, uh, for now, we are done. Yep. We're done. This is how you make checkpoints. So, hopefully you guys found this useful. If you have any questions, or uh, comments, please leave them in the comments for me and I'll try to get back to you guys as always. Um, I think that covers everything. Thank you for watching and you guys have a good one. I'll catch you later.